for the live audience to start funneling in. But uh, yeah, there we go. Got the camera up. So we're still working out some of the kinks for you watching the replay. You'll already be seeing me talk, of course. But uh, we've got TMA Live. We're bringing it back. We did a little bit maybe a few years back, and it's time to go again. So we're going to be mixing songs live. I'm looking to do this twice a week. Got my man Joey Fernandez, mastering engineer, recording engineer, Grammy nominated, just an insane talent. He's going to be joining us any minute. Uh, Running a little bit behind tonight, but kind of a formal, informal way of uh, launching the live stream. But we got some exciting stuff. We're going to be taking a look at the drums, the bass for a sweet rock song. I might even go ahead and play a little bit of it for you. Got uh, permission to use this. You guys will be able to mix it for yourselves. I will have all that information here soon. Let's hit play. Maybe the, the chorus gets you kind of excited. Let's see if we can uh, uh, make sure the levels are good. If you guys hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can give me uh, some comments, let me know. If you hear me, if you hear Pro Tools, let's go ahead and hit play and uh, see if you guys can hear this. Well, I just tested it. We're still waiting for some people to funnel in. Waiting on my man, Joey. We're going to be hanging out tonight. We're going to be breaking down this mix. Got a little bit of the, the jitters going on here. A little bit nervous. Just got a text from Joey. Here he comes. So excited about that. And uh, yeah, so we're live. If you're viewing this on Facebook, let me pull my camera back up. If you're viewing this on Facebook, we're live on YouTube. I think it's a little better quality, but happy to have you no matter where you're viewing. We should be on Twitch. Uh, I believe Instagram, but we'll, uh, again, be working out some of the kinks in the coming uh, weeks and whatnot. There's Joey. We're live, brother. Oh, we're live. Great. Yeah, we're, you, you just throw you right into it, man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's great. I thought, Hold you know, on, let let's... Me get my head, let me get my headphones on. Yeah, you do what you need to do. So I was just testing the uh, the stream. I sent you your link, and then we're waiting to see. We got a couple people funneling in. Let me do something real quick. I'm going to get... I'm gonna get more people. Let me let me do a little behind the scenes thing here. Let's let's send an email and let's see if we can get the the link, get a shareable link. And uh, I'm gonna work it out to where I actually know what I'm doing for the next one for uh, for sharing all this ahead of time and pre do a pre show or whatever. Get you guys riled up before we go live. But the, some fun stuff happening. Culture. We are. Going to be doing a giveaway. Super pumped. Isotope has chipped in a year of their music production suite pro That's bundle. Incredible, incredible. So super pumped to share that with you guys. Someone's going to win that. And I thought, hey, let's give away more. So we're going to toss in a couple of the uh, Path to Pro lifetime memberships, some of the Mixing Drums Ultimate uh, bundles. And it's going to be a great time. I'm thinking, let's see, send the broadcast. We're going to send this one here. Uh, just to our VIP audience, not send it to everybody yet. We'll send it just, just to the ones who are, uh, who've been chiming in with us and <laughs> connecting with the content recently. But how do I sound, Dave? Hey, you sound great. That mic, what, okay. what mic are you using, Joey? L Lawson. Okay. So this is Joey Fernandez, my mastering engineer, many people's mastering engineer, incredible talent, super pumped to have him on my brother. Uh, we're going to be mixing together. We're going to be talking mixing yes, maybe talking some mastering i tell you what let me also share my screen for you, those of you guys joining us i promise we'll be a little more organized for the next one but i figure let's just get to it let's start making uh making music together hanging out with you guys if you got any comments any questions anything you want to see today tonight uh would love to hang out with you guys for the next couple of hours and uh we'll see where it goes from here so all right so joey We've got this, yes, uh, we got a rock track. I was thinking maybe the other, the gospel one, but I'm going to put these multi-tracks up. So whoever's watching back the replay or hanging out live with us, you're going to be able to download these and mix it for yourself. Uh, and I'll have a full mix breakdown available uh, for purchase later. But um, I figured, pull it up. Joey has heard a little bit of this one. I'm thinking, let me get some feedback from him. If he's got any thoughts, uh, we'll just kind of... Um, play around with it. And if you guys have questions, because we're kind of just going off the cuff tonight, hit us with any um, 
questions if you want to see, hey, what do you got going on to the kick? What do you got going on to the bass? Vocals, you name it, we'll take a look at it. So I think, why don't we play it from the top? What do you think, Joe? Just Yeah, let's do it. She So that's what we're working with tonight. Thanks, Wilfredo, for the uh, for the kind words. Appreciate it, man. Hey, that's our job to draw the listener in. That's a that's a huge compliment. I appreciate it, man. So, uh, you know, this is one that's uh, pretty much done. I've got a couple notes from the client that uh, we'll be tweaking. Got his permission to share it. So super thankful for that. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna give this a go. I, I sent an email, so we'll we'll probably uh, see a few people poking their heads in over the next few minutes, but. Uh, Joey, first off, how the heck are you, man? I'm great. How about you? Yeah, doing well, man. Excited to be doing this with you. We, oh, yeah, man. This we, is we a long this. time coming. Yeah, we love teaching and we love sharing knowledge. And uh, 
an incredible value to come in here and get a session, you know, to be able to download this and, and learn. And uh, that's what it's all about, man. Just learning and just moving forward. I love it. Heck yeah, man. Learning and uh, free stuff. We get a giveaway. So I already kind of exactly. said that, but anyone who joined the live stream and uh, you didn't hear that, we're giving away a free year uh, subscription thanks to our uh, friends over at Isotope, their Music Production Suite Pro. That's a mouthful. we got to talk to them about the name on that, but uh, super thankful <laughs> that they're contributing that. And then we're going to give away a couple of the Path to Pro Lifetime bundles and some of the Mixing Drums Ultimate bundles as well. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to share the link, tell you guys where to go to sign up for that. Super pumped. We'll run that for the next week. And next week's uh, Tuesday live stream, we're going to do one Tuesday and Thursday. Still working on the time, but uh, we'll see how it goes tonight, how many people are able to join, and then we'll see uh, how it goes from there. But I have a feeling with all of our European friends being in the middle of the night that this won't necessarily be the best time, but I uh, figured, hey, why yeah, wait? Let's just about, go ahead I and... Thought, I thought about that. Yeah. But hey, you know what? We'll have a good time, man. We're going to take a look at this. Again, anyone has questions or anything, feel free to chime in. My wife's handing me the phone. It looks like we might already have some. The drums are awesome, Klaus says. How do you make sure they sit right in the mix balance-wise? That's a great, great question, and I actually wanted to talk about the drums because I'm pretty pumped about them. Um, to yeah, answer... That, that kick and snare sound amazing in the drums, I, man. I wish I could take massive credit for it to say like i recorded it or i used the i these are samples uh blended and uh, i'm pretty sure the the client recorded these i'll confirm that for next the next live stream but uh we have some live snare in there live snare snare bottom but uh, there are a couple triggers there's some stuff going on here um as far as keeping them balanced and to sit on the mix i actually struggle with this joey has to keep me in check joey's my mastering engineer uh and when i say mastering engineer uh, he's way more than that. I keep grabbing this. Can you tell him get the the first live stream jitters out? Like I keep adjusting the microphone. Um, like me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Joey uh, puts an ear on my mixes and gives me incredible uh, constructive criticism and feedback to then take it to the next level before I send it to the client. So by the time it gets to him, he's already had his hand in uh, the process, and this is one that he did as well. But uh, uh, I'm almost always drums and bass and vocals are louder than everything else. I don't know. With rock stuff, I, I do pretty well to keep the guitars yeah. on top. But for gospel stuff, I mix a ton of gospel. And almost always the kick, snare, I, the drums, the bass, and the vocals are on top. And you're missing everything else. Because there's just always so much going on that I don't, I don't want to put everything in and it just lose... The control. It's funny because it's just a, such a completely different genre of music, obviously, and some of it is really well produced, and a lot of times it's overproduced, and we have to work around that. You know, there's a lot of carving, and there's a lot of volume changes, and getting it to fit instrumentation-wise, it could be a challenge. But uh, you know, that's why we we feed off each other, and like David will send me something, and I'll listen to it. I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe the instruments are too far back now, so we go back and forth until we're uh, completely happy with our mix yeah man and uh joey his ear we have very similar taste and so this relationship um it, it just works i'm so pumped to bring that to you guys to be able to we're gonna we'll mix some songs we'll start them with you guys maybe we'll have a mix where we've got the drums and bass going and we're gonna get the rest of this stuff in we'll bounce around a little bit uh but you, you asked about the drums uh i think the way for me is uh listening at lower volume kind of a trendy technique but i i do tend to keep it lower I, I crank it when i'm working kick and bass when i want to feel the energy of the song uh but then you got to be disciplined and keep that volume lower uh especially when balance when trying to keep your balances nice and tight uh, it's a good way to keep them uh, from getting out of control i reference um i reference less now i still reference quite a bit but i reference less now than when i was you know first getting started you know 10 15 years ago with mixing uh but that's a great way as well and that comes along with the experience. You know, the more you mix, you'll probably reference less. Is uh, that's been asked to a lot of engineers. They used to reference a lot, but now not so much because once again, it's a it's a development thing. Yeah, you, and, uh, you start to get a flow and a feel for what you're doing, and you know how much top end, and you start to hear things a little bit better. Your your ear matures. Um, yeah, so I David, would definitely. We got, a, yeah. we, we got a question. Yeah. Somebody just said they just joined the stream, and the link to the multi tracks is not working. 
The link to the multi tracks. Okay. Let me see if I can see that. Yeah, let's make sure we get that right so everybody could get them. Da, da, da. Over at themixacademy.com. The easiest way is to go to themixacademy.com. And let me know if that doesn't work. But that the main the, the main site, the homepage, should get you taken care of. If that does not, report back and let me know. And we'll make sure to update the links. So, Jim McCord, yeah, let's make sure. And uh, we'll make yeah. sure that you get them for sure. Absolutely. Lazart music, yeah. Do you um, mix with monitors, headphones, or both? Is that the one you're going to say? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm actually, uh, we're on the road right now. We left Colorado and uh, are uh, kind of bouncing around at the moment in Florida. And uh, so I've been mixing exclusively on headphones. I'm very comfortable mixing just on headphones. I have a sub pack that travels with me. Um but uh, mixing in the Mix Academy, I've always mixed on headphones and then checked my mix on monitors off camera because it just works better for, honestly, to not have to edit all of the monitor audio out of my microphone. It just seemed like a convenient way to go. Uh, and we had little ones years ago that when I first really got into mixing from the house, I was mixing next to my bed. You can go to the Pro Audio Files YouTube channel. Look at some of those early tutorials, and you can see my my bed right behind me the over blankets. my shoulder with the comforters. <laughs> Remember the the comments swarming my way. Hey, great mixes, uh, and uh, you know, pretty bed sheets or whatever, pretty comforter. But um, I've just been really comfortable mixing on headphones for for years. Um, obviously, preferred monitors when I was in a well treated studio space. Um, have had two well treated studio spaces since uh, then, but. Um, yeah, I'm kind of forced to use the headphones right now. So it's uh, anything you're going to hear over the next several weeks are things. This mix headphones, headphones in a sub pack. Um, got to give credit to Sonar Works. They just rebranded themselves. Uh, Sound ID. Uh, got to hit them up. My license expired for some reason, but uh, Sonar Works. Huge shout out to them because I've used them and relied on them for years now. Uh, that in the sub pack to me, I can I can mix in a Starbucks pull out my laptop bag, got the new M1, and uh, it's working incredible. So definitely uh, don't shy away from headphones as long as you learn them and you, you know what you're yeah. doing with them. That's the key, learning your headphones. You know, There's a lot of mastering engineers now that are mastering in headphones. Mm. Uh, I actually do speaker headphones and buds as yeah. well. Yeah, I've got the buds. Yeah, so Good point. A, a different perspective on what's going on. But uh, yeah, don't shy away from the headphones because they, they are incredible tools. So, Steven asked if I'm triggering the toms. I'm pretty sure I am on this song. Yes. I don't usually, but uh, I was pretty excited about this one. And let me see. We've got, I'll show you exactly. We went live earlier to test the live stream. And uh, I, I think I saw comments about the toms four or five times. Just t those toms, that snare. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the toms. Um, they're triggered. Let me see what they're triggered. What did I use? You know what? I, I know what I used. I don't know if that... So I bought... I don't know if it was a Facebook ad or something, but I bought the Andrew Wade. Uh, you may have seen him on the Nail the Mix. Joey Sturges and those guys over there. Give a shout out to them. Um, I think it was a Facebook ad or it may have been an email. With I can't remember... Um, if he hit me up and sent them to me or if I bought them, but I have the Andrew Wade, uh, one shots and they're insane. Uh, they're great as is with a couple tweaks that I make to fit the, the, the sounds into context with the rest of the mix. Um, the, pff, some of my favorite, uh, lately for rock. I'm a huge, that sound guy. I want that sound.com. Love everything that they make. Joey and I are fanboys of what they do over there. Um, but, but the guys at, at, at Sturgis, at JS, man, they've been killing it with their libraries. Yeah, man, it's been sick. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll play. It. Let's start with the kick. Um, I pulled in a few of them, and I went with the jumper. So that's uh, that's not the original. Here's the original sound. And then minor tweaks to the kick. I'm adding some oomph down around 58, 50, 60, somewhere in there. Yep, I'm blind, so... I <laughs> gotta like zoom in whoop to be able to see that. And then uh, I reshaped the top end a little bit. Um, always real careful, three to five K. If, if 
you guys join many of these live streams, you're going to see that I'm I'm a sucker for just I don't like a lot of three to five k. And uh, so something in the click and the kick was bothering me in context, so I pulled that out so that up above is going to be a little more featured around the eight k range. You can see I added a dB or so there too. But uh, and then this is kind of my secret weapon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it with you guys, but I, pff, this thing right here, man, Kush Audio, houseofkush.com, I think is the website, their subscription, just do it. I think it's 10 bucks a month. It's um, 99, 99 a year. Come on, man. That's just Can't beat it. this thing, the Kush AR1, and this is my go-to, the Smack Daddy preset under the drums presets, and I'll dial this in a little bit, um, but it's slamming it. And then I just back it off the, all the way, the dry, 0% wet. And I just kind of blend it into taste until it gives me that thwacky smack, just goodness. Uh, for this particular one, it was 14.6% for the kick drum. Uh, sometimes that's as low. I think in the snare, you're going to see it's like 5 or 6%. Sometimes it's, it's all the way. Sometimes it's 70 or 80%. This particular kick, it's at 14.6. Let me show you. This is going to be the biggest difference. Let's solo that kick drum. Now. And then I tell you what, I've got some tracks frozen for the sake of CPU. Let me mute those guitars. Yeah. I mean, who wants to listen to just a kick drum? That's not, there's no emotion in that. But listen to the, the bypass version. Really bringing out the, wow. the, the click and the kick. I love the ambience that it brings out. A little bit of that beautiful. sustain, yep. Beautiful. Uh, the one we messed with, if you guys want to see, we have four or five awesome little breakdowns in our, our live stream test that we did. It's on the channel. Uh, we took a live kick, no samples, were harmed in that one, uh, and we used a live kick, but I gated it because I, I needed it to tighten up. I needed the, the bottom end to be tight, and to, it was a gospel track. We had lots of uh, double bass fills and some cool stuff going on, and so what I did is I tightened that up. And then I blended a, actually it was a kick sample. I blended a kick sample for a little bit of the sustain, the room sound, um, and it made it feel a little more natural. Um, but I had the tightness uh, of the gated sound that I wanted, but then blended some of the air of the room. That's what I feel like this is almost giving us more of from the kick sample here. Uh, like Joey mentioned, a little bit of that room sound. This thing, just incredible. We'll show you what we're doing on the, sna uh, the snare as well. But um, yeah, so... Andrew Wade, shout out to him. His one shots are insane. Uh, let's come down. We're going to take a look at the snare together because <laughs> I swear I saw that snare as a comment about 20 times earlier and now. <laughs> I've seen a few people mention it. So we're going to uh, we're gonna give you the secret sauce to this snare here. It's an Andrew Wade snare uh, that we're using. But first, let's take a look at the snare top. Um, I love a fat snare. I love a chunky snare uh, to a fault. Sometimes my, my snare is a little bit fat, a little bit chunky, too chunky. And uh, here is the live snare. It's bypass. So definitely pulling out the fundamental there, a little bit more weight to it. Here's the snare bottom. A quick tip on the snare bottom mics. For the longest time, I've tried to compress them and saturate them and EQ them and, and try to make them sound better. But at the end of the day, and I used to not even use much of them, but I found that they're crucial to uh, when the drummer's got ghost notes happening. And I'm, I'm always automating and whatever, but the snare bottom is really the easiest way to get those in the mix. And then compression and all that, it just it almost brings out the stuff you hate about a snare bottom mic. And so I've found that just leaving it alone and automating it up at the ghost notes and putting it back just at a, a nice chill level, and then it depends on the song and the genre, but uh, for me, just kind of leaving the snare bottom alone has been the key to, uh, to a great snare bottom sound. So here is the snare bottom just as is. And then we'll add the snare top. Take it out and listen to what we have. It's not a good sound, right? 
So now you kind of get the best of both worlds. Of course, check polarity, reverse polarity, and make sure you're getting the full tone of the two of those. Now let's talk about snare triggers. Let's see which one this is. Um, this is not the Andrew Wade. I think this one came to me from the client. Let me see. I don't know if it's from him or if I printed it, but nonetheless, we're adding bottom and top to it. Let's see what we got going on. So I, I think that might have come from the client, and uh, I blended it to uh, to taste. Let me see what we got going on here. Here is the Andrew Wade, I'm pretty sure. Yep, jumper. Woo! Wow. You might be thinking, ugh. It's like, it hits, it's gone, and then, like, what's going on there? Let's take a look at it. So... The curves, what I like to do is I like to control the transient, uh, similar to using a gate, but more flexibility. Uh, I like to come in here and manipulate the sustain and the release when I'm using samples. And for this one, I've adjusted both the direct sound and the uh, snare. What do I have? Two of them. Oh, did I detune one? Sometimes I'll... Nope, they're both the same. Oh, this one's no attack, and then this one's all transient so you can see we got the attack uh the sustain and release is tightened up but then on this one we're taking out attack so i can control the balance of the transient versus what that sustain is giving me from the same sample so let's uh let's take a listen to just where are we at here so this pro cue is probably from where i was checking polarity and then we'll get to some Q&A here. I see some comments rolling in. Yeah. So you can really feel the, the transient hits, but it's gone. And then I can control how much sustain I want by using that same sample, essentially, but removing the attack. And if that didn't make total sense, let me zoom in for you. Go to View Curves and Trigger. And I've got this, the ASR right here. So the A. I've got the full attack, but almost no sustain or release. And again, I'll hit play on that. Right? So you hear the, the transient and it's gone. But then over here, we zoom into the ASR. I've backed off the attack to remove the transient on this hit. And then controlled the sustain about a half second to a, a second. Kind of like a traditional drum room sound. And that's what this one sounds like. So now I get the transient, and then I control the ring, the sustain, and it gives me what I want in the mix. It may sound goofy in solo, but you know who cares about solo? So let's take a listen uh, in context with the rest of the kit. Let me just solo the drums out for, for this. Right on. So super, this, I mean, this is super over-processed using mostly samples, um, but I felt like that kind of radio rock sound is what I heard in my head, and uh, and I went for it. Uh, Klaus asked a great question on Facebook, I think it is. Do clients ever call out the triggers like it sounds different than before type stuff? Here's the thing. Major label artists they'll have already picked their triggers in a lot of scenarios. Like most of the time, if you're getting uh, tracks from larger indies and major labels, they're going to have already produced the sounds that they want. They're going to have picked the kick samples, the snare samples, and um, in an ideal world at least, it's going to come to you fairly well what they want. And then you're going to go in and like I did with the kick, you're going to manipulate some bottom in, maybe scooping and kind of shaping it in context with the way you have the guitars EQ'd or the vocal and that kind of thing. Um, with indie artists and you're, I mean, most of what I see, I'm almost producing in the mix. So I'm, hey, what is your vision? What do you want it to sound like? Actually, let me share. Because uh, in talking with the client, they wanted that radio rock, big, full sound. They wanted it to hit hard. Um, and they gave me their mix, which is why they hired me, was for me to make it sound like that instead of what they had here was 
this. That fill right there, dun, dun, dun. That's Goo Goo Dolls all day. I hear Iris. I don't know you guys, any Goo Goo Dolls fans in the house, but uh, every time I hear this song, I'm, I'm thinking back to City of Angels and watching a romantic movie with my wife. So that, uh, that was the rough, the demo, and uh, they wanted to go bigger. And so that communication was there, that vision was there, and, and to get that sound, why not use samples? Um, now, if they were going for 90s Goo Goo Dolls, then I wouldn't touch a sample. It would sound similar to what they've already done here. Um, and that would be communication with the client. Um, not always am I, hey, you know, double checking the references and all that. I get lazy sometimes and, and maybe a client will hit me back and say, I think it's happened a couple times where they've said, uh, no drum samples. And so no big deal. I duplicate the real sample and use reverb and different things like that to imitate the sound that, uh, that they want and, and kind of get to the vision. But um, it's very rare. I had one main time that I can think of, and it was the year I launched the Mix Academy, the very first song we ever used. Sobre Me Pi, I think was a song from um, Abner Cepeda. His producer wanted no drum samples. So I said, hey, would you please send me a kick isolated from your kit? He was very proud of the drum kit and the time they took to, to, to record the kit. I said, hey, will you please uh, send me some one shots of that kit? What if I use those so that I can isolate the kick, the snare? Um, toms is not that big of a deal usually. We can do the tom trick or slate's gate. You got a um, high cut, low pass filtered thing going on there. So you can do some cool stuff to isolate toms pretty well. But, um, and that was, that was fine. He, he was like, oh yeah, that would be a great idea, man. And so from every project then on with him, he sent me his own drum samples, and then I blended those in and, and processed them and did, did our thing. But, um, yeah, very rarely is it an issue uh, so nowadays. Something, something to learn, learn here from. So as a recording engineer, what I always do at, at the end of the session, I ask for another five to ten minutes from the drummer mm. so we could get yep. indiv individual hits of everything. So we'll get a bunch of kicks, snares, and I'll have them play different velocities sometimes. I'll even get the hi-hat, like give me an open and a close, symbols, et cetera, just because of this same scenario that Dave's talking about. We want the isolation. See, I used to do it at the beginning of the session, right after we got them tuned, so that the first thing we had was the kind of soft, medium, they're, hard. And they're, still and they're still tuned, exactly. They're tuned, <laughs> and then and then we'd <laughs> set those out to the side and, and then get to work tracking. But uh, what are those uh, lug locks work really well for the snare? Use yes. those at uh, at church a lot to make sure that mm -hmm. snare stays in uh, in tune. But yeah, so uh, let's see. We got more questions. You guys are chiming in. Appreciate you hanging out with us tonight. I know it's late, but uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Jay James, he says another question, kind of related to my last. You mentioned that sound already. Any specific recommendations for their free samples and recommendations for their paid packs? Um, they're actually on Splice now, so. You can go through and sample all the different ones, I believe, on Splice. I, I had a membership for like a month, and then I just I have so many samples that I uh, I didn't need anymore, and I already owned all of theirs. So um, uh, as far as that sound goes, it uh, depends on what you're mixing. Uh, buy them all because they're amazing. But for rock stuff, I would say the um, Near Z and Giuliano pack is Those are always great yeah for rock incredible um a man's kick is a is a famous preset i think i've heard that in many records over yeah. the last few years uh, dang it what are some ben phillips the uh, anything with um paul mayberry for stuff. ambiance the uh, airplane hanger the hanger is sick i use That's those really for That's room really mics good, a lot check them out um it's just long beautiful spaces oh yeah <laughs> organic is great yeah man i i could go on so i we like them all neon jekyll and hyde hey one of my favorite bands of all time mute math uh Yo. darren king has got a pack or two with them and they're sick so definitely check uh check them out but yeah great question we don't have a good answer for it it's it's really it's, comes it's down to, to all it's of them to answer. Yeah. um hey 
Jay James, I missed your first question was for virtual drums, adding drum samples, slate drums mostly, any tips for getting the samples to actually sound good in the mix? They tend to sound great on their own, but don't fit into the mix. Um, you know what I've, I've noticed? I recently discovered, uh, Joey turned me on to the UVI drum replacer, and you can pull in virtual um uh, virtual instruments, so Easy Drummer or Drum Kit, whatever you have, you know, you can pull in the the VSTs. And I found that I was mixing a gospel track, and uh, Joey's buddy Calvin Rogers dropped a uh, an awesome sample pack with Tune Track, the makers of Easy Drummer and um, Superior Drummer. I pulled in Calvin's kit, and the ones that I liked, just listening to the the loops and whatnot that they provide, the MIDI files those sounds did not sound good in the context of the mix I was working on. The ones that sounded good were the ones I thought sounded eh, not so great. So it kind of goes back to what I said earlier about solo. Solo doesn't matter. It matters in context. So you may just have to cycle through and find the right ones. Um, and then now we're getting into the whole conversation of blending samples for different reasons. Similar, we used the, the sample earlier. We kept the transient and timed that nice and tight, but then used the second, the duplicate of it for just the, for the sustain for the length. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the super compressed one for, for more length if you want it, or using a, a sample that has a little bit of ring for a natural feel, or one that's weighty for chunk. I mean, we're getting into, uh, you know, I could go on and on, but um, I would say cycle through in the context of the mix if you can. Uh, it's CPU intensive sometimes, but... Um, yeah, I would definitely, or another option, just bounce all of them and then blend them all and just check phase and make sure they're, they're in, you know, you got a good phase coherence. Correct. But, uh, yeah, maybe we'll have to, uh, pull open slate and, uh, mess with those on a, on a track feature UVI drum replacer and have some fun. Yeah. So, well, Hey, while I'm thinking about it, let's mention, um, if you guys want to get in on the giveaway go to the mixacademy.com. And I think I closed my browser window, but the mixacademy.com. Pull that up real quick. Make sure that's on the stream. If you guys can see this, uh, the homepage here. We'll go ahead. If you scroll down, I'm going to put a link in the description too, but you go to free tutorials will take you to the blog and the latest blog post, new giveaway featuring Isotope's music production suite. It literally went live today. So you can go here and be the first to get in on it. You're going to be able to log in or use your email. Um, you can see we're giving away a year subscription to the Music Production Suite Pro. And then we've also got the Path to Pro Lifetime Bundle. We'll give a couple of those away. And then also the Mixing Drums Ultimate Bundle, which includes super popular course we just released last month. Uh, man, is it last month? Going on almost two months ago uh, with my man Jared Henderson. Blew my mind the way that he tunes drums. I can't believe I'd never heard of it before. It's been a thing for a while, but basically tuning the drums to frequency and there's apps that are extremely affordable, 10 or 15 bucks, and he walks you through the whole process and gives you charts for uh, recommended tunings and all kinds of stuff. Just changed my life. Um, I've got more compliments from people at church and people from churches that I've tuned the drums since I took his course. I was there when we filmed it in Colorado Springs, and holy cow, man, comments left and right about those drums sound great. Hey, man, what you did to those drums? And I've been a fan of the wrinkle-free method, just kind of, you know, it's a, always a guessing game and trial and error to get a good drum sound. But to replicate that sound, I, 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 no drum tech here. That? Now I can I, confidently say Joey's interrupted me for good reason. I heard the before and I heard the after and it was very impressive. <laughs> Night and day, man. Night and day. <laughs> so uh, definitely check that out. It pumped up about uh, about the giveaway. Super excited. And uh, we'll see how... Uh, look at that. I refreshed the page. We already have someone over there. <laughs> Sub six submissions already from five seconds of talking about it. So awesome. you guys rock, man. Super pumped to, to bring that your way. And hey, feel free to share it on Facebook as well. Hey, if you're watching the stream on Facebook, we'd love for you to invite you to like it, share it, love to put some more eyeballs on it. We're going to be doing this twice a week for the foreseeable future. We'll see. Maybe we go back to once a week once we kind of get some momentum. But if you guys love it, we'll keep bringing it to you. And uh, we'll uh, we'll keep talking mixing. We've got a ton of free multi-tracks, themixacademy.com, the free VIP bundle. 
uh, keep bringing these comments, these questions, and we'll we'll keep answering them. So, I don't know, Joey. What do you think? Should we look at uh, something else in this one before the computer gets hot? I don't know if let's it's look gonna... at guitars. Yeah, let's check them out. Let me see. I might have to unfreeze them for a minute here. Let's go. Guitars are such a a tricky thing if they're not recorded well. Oh yeah. Good night. I tell you what. Let me. Uh, See, if you guys have any questions, I'm going to freeze the drums for the sake of time. We'll uh, we'll hang out. We'll talk while we process these. I'm going to right-click and freeze these. Yeah. And no worries. There's a couple that I've tried to freeze inactive tracks. Try to do too many things at once. Uh, but hey, if you're watching the replay, drop me a comment. Let me know. Let us know what genres you want to feature here on TMA Live. If you want to see, we mix a ton of gospel, CCM, rock, pop, hip-hop, R&B, you name it, country, jazz. Uh, had some requests for dance, EDM, electronic. It's been a minute since I've touched some dance stuff, but I love it. Love it all, man. Would love to uh, show you guys what you want to see. So definitely keep us posted. Drop comments. Let us know. And uh, if you have multi-tracks that you'd like to submit for us to feature, and mix, and you give us permission to share them with our audience, with subscribers, to uh, be able to download the multi-tracks, feel free, send them to support at themixacademy.com, and we'll be sure to uh, to get back to you, send a, an MP3, let us know, hey, here's a track I want to submit, and uh, it could be featured here on TMA Live, so definitely take us up on that. We'll, uh, Tom's. We got we got to touch the toms as I <laughs> as I freeze the tracks. <laughs> I got to do it though. So many people asked about it, so we'll we'll yeah. unfreeze them. We'll take a look at the toms. That was a big re- request, toms. And oh, oh, you're getting hit early. Joey's approach to mastering. Oh man. Uh oh. It changes from song to song. It's all dependent. The biggest thing about mastering, I think it's important that you have a relationship with your client because you could discuss, you know, what's lacking or what they're too much of. Mm. And uh, it becomes a learning experience for the client and myself because uh, sometimes you, you'll get mixes. Once again, the instrumentation is really low and can barely hear it or vocals are really low. Yeah. Loud kicks or snares and everything sounds really unbalanced. And luckily for me, I've been around the studio for so many years and you know I could perceive it really quickly and um, at the end when the changes are made it, it just makes a huge difference you know just going back and forth with the client and uh, you know people want to talk about automated mastering and blah, blah blah that's cool but to have that one-on-one with your mastering engineer it's a pretty big deal it's invaluable man yeah, yeah. Uh, you were telling me yeah. earlier uh, Joey was saying he had a couple masters come in we were talking on the phone and um, he said, I had to send them back. I had to let them know, hey, here's some things, man. Go hit this. And that's the thing about Joey. Send him your, your stuff, guys, for, for mastering. Uh, hire him. He's amazing. Uh, he oh, is a sick recording engineer. He's an incredibly talented mixing engineer. So when he goes to master, his ear is tuned for the whole process. He's about music. He's about releasing songs that fit the emotion. And if he hears something that's off, man, he's, he's from Chicago. He's going to shoot straight with you. He's going to tell you, hey, man, go back. That low end's not working for me, and it's, uh, it's beyond our control here in just the mastering phase. I want you to go, and, and he'll give you notes, mix notes. I would even say hiring Joey for mastering, his rate is a steal of a deal because he's going to give you mix critique, essentially, <laughs> exactly. in the it's process. Cool. It's exactly. just, uh, man, I can't recommend him enough. Blow him uh, blow him up here. because. And, and my philosophy is also honesty is always the best policy because if I'm not honest with you, you will never learn. And we have to be honest so we could, you know, we could see where, where our deficiencies are. And, yeah, man. Uh, you'll learn. You'll you'll learn a lot, definitely. So we got to hiring a good mastering engineer. I'm sure. going to put Joey's uh, mastering information. His website is in the works. Uh, we're going to be yes. launching one for him uh, with some sound samples. You guys can hear before and afters and that kind of thing. But uh, Joey, do you want to share your email? Or you want me to put it in the the description? Yeah, we'll put it in the description. Okay, yeah, cool. We'll put it in the description. So we'll put yeah, his absolutely. contact info in the description. But yeah, we'll definitely uh, share that again. We're 
we're just going in, but we're diving head first, get this going yeah. for you guys, and then uh, we'll build it like a house, like a good if mix. You, and if you guys want to get an idea, we just did Dr. Toomey's album. Uh, David mixed it, and I mastered it, and uh, it just came out incredible, absolutely awesome. Super humbled to be a part of that project. Uh, give a shout out to Job and Robin yep. and the team. Some incredible musicians, great engineers. Uh, Job uh, produced. Uh, there was another producer. I forget his name. Forgive me. Uh, I worked closely with Job, but uh, Dr. Toomey, just an incredible human being, and uh, so excited about that. So uh, here we go. So Joey's website. We're gonna get that going. What do we got here? K Clip on the mix bus. Yes. K clip on the mix. Yeah, you wanna you wanna see the K clip oh. the mix bus? Oh. We'll pull up that and we'll pull up in Tom's. Let me see. I gotta they get. Wanna see, they wanna see the sauce. They wanna see it, man. We'll give it to them. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Exactly. Especially we, we you especially guys. you early birds. You, you guys checking out the. Uh, Always want to set you guys up for extreme success, man. So here we go. My chain. I'm gonna blast through the chain today, but uh, I talk about it quite a bit in a couple of my recent videos. I've got a, a little bit of mixed bus processing. I used to use a lot. Now I'm sometimes I'll use a lot, but it's rare. Now I've got VMR, virtual mixed bus. Uh, Revival's not in. This isn't in. These are, I really could just turn them off. I haven't been using them. Just a little bit of gain staging. Got a little ahead of myself with the uh, the volume on this one. Just kept pushing things. But uh, louder is better, right? And then we have the BX Townhouse. And let me make sure you guys are seeing that. Yep, you guys can see the screen. So the BX Townhouse, um, uh, what are we doing on the meter here? This is one I could push that a little harder probably for, you know, four, maybe even six dB of reduction, and I'm sure it would sound good. It'd be a little different, but it would sound good. Um, two now, right? But uh, yeah, we're two? barely hitting two on this one. This stuff goes into my um, Mix B, which is, Mix A is my, my stereo bus essentially. Mix B is parallel compression. And on this mix, I'm rocking the Pro C2 for just a clean, grab it, and uh, smash it compressor. You can see this reduction going on. That's, uh, that's nasty, right? 20 dB at all times, it looks like. And then I've got another BX, and this is probably another 10 dB or so on this parallel. You know, what's 10 dB between friends, right? No, it's so, 14. Yeah, I saw 16 on that first transient there. Let's, oh. yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm smashing this one, and then I'm blending a little bit, you know, minus 20. Well, let's mute this, and you can hear it. It's purely distortion. I'm just, I'm just getting it loud, right? So... Um, I'm not sure that there's much feeling in that, but there's definitely some loudness and some grit, which I think works for this mix. Um, and then that's going into Fab Filter Saturn, which was a first for me. We're gonna talk about that in a second. I gotta go back and hit the toms, but K clip, yes, I go two to three dB. Sometimes it's two, two and a half, or three, uh, depends, but uh, push that into the Pro L2. And then this is maybe two or three dB of reduction, maybe three. And we're probably minus seven, I would say minus six, if I can That's get uh, for this genre. For sure. Let me see if I can get. Yeah, there we go. So let's come over here and take a look at what our loudness is at. And I think for the stream, I even backed it off a dB one point one, which I don't care if it. Some of you guys are gonna hate on me, but I don't care if it clips a little bit. If it sounds good, exactly. it's good. Ex exactly. Labels don't care about that. Labels are. <laughs> They, they want to see some red lights sometimes. They do. Loudness. Uh, let's take a listen to this one. That's without the vocal in, and we're at minus 7.5, and I have it back minus 1.1, which is not what I'm only doing that for the stream uh, to protect it. But so you're I, I, probably like about six and a half. Minus six, minus six, five with the vocal in there for sure. So. Hey man, to each their own. I like it loud. I'm not afraid. I, I like it loud when loud sounds good. Um, I'm not afraid to to back off. You know, minus eight, minus ten. I'd say my average. What do you think, Joey? Our our average release is minus seven to minus eight ish. Yeah, it, it's yeah, exactly between 
it once again depends on the genre. Right. If it's bass heavy, you're not, you know, getting it to minus seven, six, oh, six, five is gonna I might sometimes get it there. it's <laughs> achievable, uh, but it will distort rock definitely because it's not as big in the low end as a, uh, you know, bass genre. So yeah, so uh, we got some some people want to get in touch with Joey. That's exciting, man, for me. That, oh, thank you, guys. I, well, I needed yeah, him to get on here. Description, absolutely. We'll we'll get you his information for sure. Um, so pumped to be able to uh, to tell you guys about him. He's an incredible talent. Oh well, thank We've you. We've got here. Let me see. That. We got a question. Da, 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 da. Do you leave the mix bus plugins enabled when sending the mix for mastering? I'm gonna change your question a little bit. When I send it to Joey. And yes, I do. I leave everything except I will bypass the K clip and the limiter. I even send the parallel compression. And actually, Joey asks me for the way I had it. And then he'll take that. You know, here's the thing with Joey. I'm going to show you a trick here that he did over the phone without even seeing the screen. Sometimes Joey will, will get a mix of mine. And maybe he'd be better to explain this. And he doesn't he didn't he doesn't touch it because he's already involved in the mix process and giving feedback he may not have to to touch anything he's just going to you know he's going to do his trickery with his specialty gear and he's going to put his little you know but he's going to get it loud and it's going to be comparable to what i sent other times he saves my butt and this is one where I had a good mix, but it was, man, it felt it was scooped. I was missing some mid range, and we Joey had a, came we had in. A, we had a we had a smiley face mix. <laughs> it, it was Fletcher Munson was rolling in his grave because I abused his technique, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it was just it wasn't right. And so Joey came in, and he uh, over the phone was listening to the mix, and he said, "Dave, pull up in Fab Filter Saturn. Let's let's go in here. Create the bands. Give, give me a crossover at one twenty two point two. Give me, you know, 800 hertz, whatever. He's telling me what to do. I go in. I'm like, yes, sir. I put in the bands. And he says, go down and let's go to the modulation. And this, I'm like, dude, I didn't even mess with that setting before. Make sure high quality, blah, blah, blah. He walks me through. And he basically is going to push more mid-range into K-Clip and the limiter. Um, and this is one that Joey, the client, um, we're still in the mix revision process. I've got a couple of minor tweaks for him still. Um, so Joey hasn't even touched this one yet. But he, over the phone... Listen to the difference between this. We pushed, basically pushed some more mid-range in and drove a little saturation in, uh, tightened up the bottom end a little bit. Here is with Fab Filter Saturn. Now, there's going to be a volume difference, so I can already hear some of you going to say, ah, louder. It's, it's not apples to apples here, so disclaimer. This is going to get quieter when I turn it off. But try to focus on the mid-range and hear the, um, the lack of mids whenever I turn it off. So it's hard. It's hard. I can I can see the argument of, hey, we need to get a like a level match thing. Maybe we'll bounce this and put it up on the site for those of you guys who are uh, here hanging out with us early. But uh, dang it, man, that you saved my butt. I'm just going to come out and say it. And once again, you know, what saved it was listening to the references. Once again, you know, I kept on going back and forth between the reference, the reference says and listening to this. I go, it's lacking. It's definitely lacking some mid range. I go, let's do this. And. Let's experiment and see what's what's best. And it come worked. on, man, it worked. Sent it to me, I'm like, that's it right there. That's that's what I'm talking about. It was a done deal from there. So, and <laughs> the client loved it. So that that's all that mattered right there. Um, hey, we had uh, what's the name? I need to start wearing my glasses, but uh, Taller Dale. Sip. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to Google your name, and you come on next time, and I'll get it right. But uh, he said just some 20 dB of gain reduction. If it works, it works. Absolutely. Like, amen to that. <laughs> And then also he asked, uh, how no do you rules. break them all the time um, and follow them quite a bit too. So how do you keep low end and depth with that LUFS? Great question. I put a lot of low end into my mixes. I feel like, um, especially, I don't even know if I need to say, especially almost everything I do. I, I love low end. I wear a sub pack. 
Um, and so I can feel the difference between kick hitting me at 100 hertz, 70 hertz, 50 hertz. Um, if, it, if it has enough, if it doesn't, when I reference, uh, the tuning you can feel with a sub pack, if you pitch shift the kick drum, mm-hmm. you can feel where that kick is resonating and, and how you manipulate the fundamental. And so I'm, I'm not afraid to boost a ton of bottom in, but one of the tricks is tight kick drums tight kick drums it hits it's gone it's not super sustaining if you want bass to be sustaining if you have a bass that's not going to have much subs and you can have a kick drum that extends a little bit more but i feel like one of the ways that i'm able to hit it so loud and retain i don't want to call it depth but um to have that punch is to 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 shape that kick drum in a way that it hits, it's gone, it does its job. Um, and then the bass can be full and sustain, and maybe there's a little manipulating going on between the fundamental and the kick and the bass. Sometimes I'm boosting the fundamental of the kick in the bass to get them to feel right for that given song. But um, I think referencing is, is key. I, I show the referencing trick. Definitely, if you're new to the channel, man, hey, welcome. Go check out some of the videos I've released the last several months. There's a couple there that... I show the referencing trick, taking a high cut, low pass filter and going all the way down to 20 and 30 hertz, referencing back and forth, level match your reference to your track, um, mixing through loudness is big for that. And uh, and you'll start to feel that a lot of kicks, maybe Joey can, can argue with me on this one or agree, but a lot of kicks in the industry, those final mixes, those kicks aren't resonating very long in the sub frequencies. Correct. They're re- really tight. And Hits. The bottom, li- the bottom line is this. You know, you have to listen for conflict between the bass and the kick. If that ain't right, you're going to have a tough time mixing the song because it's going to resonate and there's going to be, it's going to be all over the place. So definitely like Dave, you know, his monitoring, he's able to hear 70, maybe even 50 Hertz. You know, you can hear the, what's going on in the kick and, you listen to a kick drum and a bass fighting at that frequency, it ain't going to be pretty. Mm. So to be able to hear those frequencies is very important. Absolutely. And, uh, I, I, I'm going to say to be able to feel them with the sub pack, game over. Yes. That for me is is life-changing. So, um, yeah, I, I can't leave that out. I, I got to give them love. Not sponsored. I would love to. Um, they did replace mine. Mine broke, and they sent me a, one, a replacement. That was super kind of them, but not sponsored. Would love to get my hands on their new one when it when it ships. Yeah. But uh, hey, we got a question well, joined in late. Man, I can't forget my uh, my brother back here asking about the toms. We'll look at the toms, I promise. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll uh, make sure we get we go to that next after this question. Doriso, if I'm saying that correctly, forgive me if I'm not. Uh, joined in late, not sure if you covered this, but how do you get your mixes to minus seven LUFS without making your uh, making it feel lifeless due to not having enough dynamics? That's a great question. Um, one that I'm not so much thinking about because I feel like I get a punchy kick and I get a punchy snare, almost too punchy. Sometimes I'm clipping them to take out punch because I'm I. <laughs> I get the transient shaper going, and man, I make sure you can feel the impact. Um, something I do is I do a decent amount of automation. Let's scroll up here and see if I'm a liar or if I actually did some automation on this one. Uh, if we take a look at, I think they're frozen right now, so I don't know if we'll see the. So, like, here's the snare. I mean, it's a little bit here. Um, that snare is a sample. That's not a, uh, a super velocity friendly sample. I think it's a one shot. But I'm, uh, you know, a little crescendo for the snare. I'll go through and I'll massage the kick drum sometimes. Um, there's some hits that I'll take out. and There's little things that we can do. Toms, I don't know that I've got to tom automation on this one yet. But they were, uh, I mean, at this point, when it's this loud, you're just, you're just making sure that sonically they can cut through. Uh, but I do typically do quite a bit of automation, especially in my gospel stuff, Um but, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing too much automation in this one. A lot of guys in EDM and dance music, they automate the master fader. Yeah. So when it goes right before the drop, you know, they'll, they'll automate maybe one or two dBs down. And then when, on the drop, it comes right back up. So it creates a sense of dynamics. Here is the drum bus. I've automated drum fills up. You can see a handful of these different drum fills. So here's... Yep. 
good nice. example there. You can feel the crescendo happens, but then the snare flam to the kick, that pickup to the uh, to the one of the chorus. We're lifting that up. I mean, what are we lifting that up? A good DB or so. A couple DB. Nice. Yeah, two and a half DB. It's a nice little lift there. So that going into the limiter, it's still you feel that kind of pickup. And to Joey's point, I do it all the time in all genres, is I'll pull the, the mix bus down minus one, and then at the pre-chorus maybe go up half a dB, and then at the chorus go up that full dB back to one. Exactly. Um, so, Great yeah, impact. definitely automation trickery helps to uh, to kind of bring back some of the the life or the character of the dynamics. It's fake, but... In a sense, it uh, can kind of save it a little bit. Uh, Jim Mullis, great to hear you're doing well. It's been a while since we've spoken. Hey, Jim, I appreciate you. Hey, thanks for coming on. Great show, he said. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you guys coming and hanging out. We'll, uh, we're will we going to be doing this every week. Super pumped to bring it to you. Um, awesome. Let's go to Tom's. Yeah, let's take a look at those. And what do we got going on? I got to unfreeze them. How's that computer feeling? The MacBook Air, the M1, it doesn't have a fan. So we'll see. It's, M- it's hanging M1's- in there. M1s do get hot, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, they say they didn't, and then I said, well, let me <laughs> hold, hold. I don't drink, but hold my beer. <laughs> I, I made it hot. Uh, let's see here. So we'll unfreeze the drums, and we'll see if we can prevent that dreaded CPU error. I got my wife over here with covered up in a, a quilt because <laughs> I dropped the air to make sure it was a good 70 degrees in here to prevent it. All right, so Tom's. I replaced them. So I don't typically, hey man, no matter the genre, I don't typically replace the Tom's. Rock, it depends. I do more so in this genre. Uh, pop rock depends on the song, but uh, for this stuff, anything that's got heavier guitars, and I'm not saying this is a heavy song, but it's got some energy there in the guitars. Uh, definitely for the heavier stuff, I uh, I lean towards replacing them because I like to control them. OCD really comes out when I'm trying to get those toms to the stick hitting the head. And, and a big feature I like about Trigger, really any UVI drum sample replacer, whatever they call it, does this too. Um, I like to go to the curves, and I didn't hear but I typically will control the sustain and the release here um, per hit, and then I'll automate it. If you have fills that are gonna ring out into like a, a break, you know, I'll have them real tight, doom, 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 doom. and then for that final, doom, I'll let that I'll automate the sustain and release to extend so that that can ring out and fill that part, but then any fills where they're, you know, 16th or 8th, whatever, whatever's going on, with tight fills, uh, faster fills, it'll be a tight hit. It's in, it's gone. It's nice and, and tight, controlled. But then I'll automate for that to release a little bit. Now, these, I did not do that. Probably a little bit of laziness in this one, so forgive me for that. But it would probably be a good idea to do what I just explained in this song at some point. But let's take a look. So we've got the Andrew Wade Sledge Tom. A little bit of room in there because... You got to. Here's that one. Let me mute those guitars again so you guys can hear it. Got those uh, hyper-processed background vocals. We'll turn those off as well. We'll go ahead and we'll just mute all vocals. Yeah, we got a BGV's bus. Let's see. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so you get a little bit of the room sound from it. They, they I, I don't know who if Andrew Wade recorded them or if he just mixed them or what, but these sound great so you can see that's not decaying too the low winds not decaying too heavy so it's it, I almost don't need to do what I was talking about it's in it's out nice. I don't think I'm gating these am I did I use neutron to tighten up the sustain I bet I did look at that I did so minus 5 dB on so instead of doing what I talked about in automating I just pulled all of them back a little bit Minus 5 dB on uh, the low end with Neutron's, Neutron Pro, I think they call it now. The sustain there. So, but yes, these are replaced. Here is uh, Tom 2. Now, here's something about it. I, did I EQ these or did I just have an EQ? Yeah, so I EQ'd these. Something that I do almost every song with Tom's is I listen in solo to a fill where most of the Tom's are active 
and I like to make the toms feel like they, they like they sound like for, they're from the same kit. You'd be surprised. So many times, the rack tom has got almost no bottom end or sustain, um, and then rack two or the floor tom has too much. And so I like for them to feel cohesive and like they're part of the same drum kit. And so I'll EQ them individually to help them sound like they they belong together, like a pair. And so the EQ here, I don't know what, uh, yeah, so I'm taking out top end in this one and that one. They're, it's rare that, they, that it works to just rock one EQ setting, but take a listen. Usually I'm having to EQ quite a bit of stick hitting the head, top end, 8K, 6K, whatever, into a floor tom to help it cut the way that the rack does. And then I'm boosting bottom end um, into the rack tom to help it feel more full like the floor toms do, kind of balance them out a little bit. But let's take a listen to these. Uh, let's actually, let's hear the original. Let's turn all this off, make them inactive. Let's hear the original toms with no processing. I don't know if that's a GUI error. Look at that. That's trippy. Oh, that. <laughs> Our first M1 <laughs> Pro Tools bug there, but I could care less, man. The processing power has been great. Let's listen to the toms as it came to us. I see my light died behind me, so you guys can only see my face, but... Woo! Okay, so let's listen one more time. No, 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 let's not listen one more time. Okay. Let's, you know what, let's listen to those with my bus processing. Yeah. The Tom bus processing. This might help them a little bit. You know. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So now let's, let's replace them. Yeah, nice. cuts through those guitars. You know what I mean? Less bottom in. I didn't need it. And uh, there you go. So shout out to Andrew Wade. Might need to get in touch with him. See, maybe he'll do an interview and uh, we'll mix a rock song together through the stream really, or something. Really quickly. Dave, yeah, hit me, what man. Are we doing with, what are we doing with the, uh, with the multiband? It's on the Tom bus. Yeah, the multiband is actually, if you want this preset, for the FabFilter Pro MB, this is uh, this comes to you from the Waves. What is it? The the linear multiband from Waves. Uh, there's a preset called Floor Tom One, I believe it is. And for years, C six. Nope, it's the the linear multiband. Um, oh, the linear, yeah. The, yeah, the, you the see, like, one. yep, yep, the the kind of gold yellow thing. Yeah. And um, I pulled that preset up one day, just messing around. And I loved what it did. I put it on the bus, stopped using many Waves plugins, only to transfer that preset over to the FabFilter Pro MB. And this is what we have. So um, absolutely love what this does. This is the bulk of the tone. Here is here's those same sounds. Here's those samples with no tom processing. Okay, let's solo them. And let's find that fill again back here somewhere. You know? And then here's the processing. Come on. <laughs> it just works. So VMR, I have that, uh, just had that in the template for years. This one right here, I'm going to turn it on and off. Here's with it. And then without it. No, sir. Snappy, right? It cuts through the mix a lot better. Listen to the transient in the top end here. Just, yeah. Especially in the last two. Love it. Yeah. So that makes a pretty big difference. You know, that's quite a, quite the EQ going on there, doing a lot of what that Pro MB is already doing. I almost wonder if I didn't send enough signal into it for this one, and so I felt like I needed more. But giving a little bottom end, uh, taking out the mids, feels pretty good. We'll do a before and after here is with it and without it quite boxy without it a uh, little tape processing nothing fancy there nice. and then we were taking out sustain in the bottom end so we have a multi-band setup here i wonder we yeah we're boosting a top boosting a top i'm losing my mind uh 4db of attack 
for the transient on these guys. So that's a pretty big deal there too. And uh, we were cutting sustain in the bottom. So preventing them from overloading the low end, managing that low end. We got quite a bit in the base, quite a bit in that kick. Um, I didn't need it in the toms. I already had kind of the impact I wanted. I didn't need it to ring out super long. And uh, yeah, so... So there are the toms. If you guys want to see more of this, I'm sure we'll have the full breakdown of this one recorded. Uh, the full mix breakdowns will be available for purchase, but uh, the multi-tracks, you'll be able to download those and mix it for yourself for free. Just join the email list, and they're yours, along with 20 or 30 other songs. I've got my top 10, some of the just my favorite mixes that I've been able to, uh, to do in the Mix Academy over the years. I got those featured for you guys to download for free for now. I don't know if I'm going to leave those up there for long, but... If you're on the stream now, you're definitely going to be able to get it. Um, definitely um, going to be uh, going to be there for you. I'm checking out the comments here. Uh, Thoriso, does Joey master 100% in the box, or does he use outboard gear? <laughs> Got outboard gear coming out of my nose. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, I'm hybrid, so I do a bit of both. Um, on some projects, I've done in the box completely, and they sounded amazing. Mm. And, uh, but the most important thing is probably conversion and mastering. So great conversion is going to make a big difference. So, um, But I, I am hybrid. So I got Neve MBPs. I got GML EQs. I got mass, uh, massive passives. Uh, I have um, uh, oh, I just got Ibis, Crane Song Ibis. Um, uh, Phoenix, Thermia Thermionic Phoenix Compressor. So there's a lot of stuff to, to go around. The key to mastering is simplicity, keeping things simple and not going crazy with EQs, uh, things like that, because, you know, the mix is going to pretty, mi pretty much dictate 90% of what's going to happen. So, Yeah, it, let me uh, reiterate what he said about the uh, in-the-box stuff that I've heard him do. It sounded great. The hardware stuff sounds great. Um my my chain here with the K-clip into the limiter, I believe, let's be real here, guys. Sonar works, the sub pack, my uh, master bus chain, I, I, Joey, one one man, Joey. This guy, he is a, a music <laughs> fanatic, incredible ear. I can't uh, prop him up enough. He has, uh, he has absolutely helped me. Um, helped each other over the years, man. Exactly. It's, it's it's a give it's, and take it's, relationship it's, for sure. It's it's a it's a it's a fellowship. It's a brotherhood for life, you know. So we we learn and we pass it on. That's what we do. Z Kings Production says, "Please save this live session, please." Hey, this is going live on uh, the replay. Will be available right after. We actually we took all last week testing it on air, off air, trying to make sure that um, we got the bugs worked out. We don't have all of them worked out, but the it's replay is now in stereo. So if you miss this or you're get, catching us late, everything we did tonight will be on the YouTube channel. Uh, definitely click subscribe, hit that bell for notifications, like, all that good stuff. Uh, share it. We'd be so grateful if you'd share it. Um, and we'll keep bringing them to you. You guys hit us with uh, any questions. We'll, we'll come up with a way for you guys to submit questions beforehand so I can kind of read them off and we'll maybe structure the show around your questions. We're going to be interviewing. Joey and I are going to be interviewing... I'm just going to throw out, maybe I won't. I'm not going to throw out names. I'm going to hold no, back. Yet, yet, we, 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 got, we, got some, we got some heavy hitters, some man, ones. that we're going to be bringing on. It's going to be exciting to, uh, to talk to some incredible people uh, in the industry across genres. This is not the show for you if you're, I mean, you still learn something, but if you're just like in one genre, that's all you want to do. We'll see you a couple times a year whenever we feature your genre, but we are music fans and we mix it all from rock pop country hip-hop r&b jazz you name it we're going to be touching it here on the live stream and in the path to pro membership which we're going to be giving away the lifetime bundle here go to the mixacademy.com that new blog post is up i'll send a link via email here in the next couple of days as well but and we'll put the link in the description for those of you who are watching uh the replay but yeah these are going to be live we're going to leave them up on the channel so pumped uh Hey, Thoriso, thank you so much for the uh, for the compliment on Dr. Toomey's album. We really appreciate it. Hey, yes, thank you very much. He said, you guys are amazing. Like what you did on Dr. Toomey's album. Uh, that was that was an incredible process. Super uh, yeah. thankful. Uh, you know, I mixed one, I mixed three or four songs on, on Dr. Toomey's previous album. 
I came in and helped finish the record. Uh, I think it was John Blass and maybe even uh, John Yash was on that record. Um, and then myself, and then they came to me for the full record. Yash mixed, I think, one song. He mixed one song, one song on the new one. one um, and uh, so, what an honor to to be on the same. And that that's happened maybe two or three times in the last few years, where I've had the honor of Salvo was another one. I had a couple mixes. Um, Paul Salvo Salvison, incredible engineer, human Taco being Tuesday. in his own right. Taco, Taco Tuesday, Tuesday, man. <laughs> We'll try to get Salvo again. We interviewed him, so check that out on the channel. Incredible guy, what man. Love great, he, great, great person. Not Very afraid talented. to share. Early in my mixing career, he t- he answered the phone and uh, shared advice with me. And I think it was mixing for someone who had previously hired him to mix, and he still shared advice with me. So just a humble guy. I love those guys and can't wait to uh, to talk to him more. But all right, well, man, we worked we worked on the drums a little bit. We saw the. Uh, the Toms finally got to that. We talked about the two bus and loudness, and I don't know if you guys have any other questions. I know it's it's late here where I'm at, but we can go a little bit longer if anyone's got some fresh you questions. Let me see if I let's missed touch, any. Let's touch on the let's touch on the bass because I heard some glorious distortion there, and I love it. <laughs> Andrea said, "Was that long digital delay tail necessary?" I you know I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tasting. I don't I, honestly. I don't know that I meant for it to be that. I automate it uh, up and down, but wherever it was, you know, yeah, I let it go, man. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little out of control for Andreas, but let's see. Let me it's okay. let's pull up the bass. I think it's the longest delay tail I've ever uh, I've ever used. <laughs> I remember pulling it in. I was like, "That's obnoxious," but I don't know. It just kind of felt good, so I left it. All right, we got guitars. What are we doing on... No, you want to talk about bass. the bass. Yeah, I want to talk about the bass. Joey wants to look at the bass. Let's, uh, did I freeze it? Let's unfreeze this, this bad boy. No, it's... it's. See, I'm new to folders. I'm not used to seeing the, uh, the waveform up here in brown. I don't know what's going on there, but... All right, so bass. We have a DI and we have an amp. I think I created the amp tone. This is not a... We, we were sent one track. It was the DI. Let's take a look at the bass. And we'll go ahead and mute those guitars. Let's hear the bass as it came to us with no processing. It's actually... I'm, I'm fairly light on the processing on this bass. Um... Usually I've got a few things going on on the bass level track here. I'll blend the amp and the DI, and then I'll hit the bass level here with some more compression. It sounded good. I left it alone. felt pretty good, so we'll see. Maybe we can improve on it, but let's listen. Okay, so thin and little bit of top end. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to play it and then we'll... So you can hear there's no compression. Uh, very dynamic. Very string slapping around. Got a lot of that kind of high frequency thing. I wanted more of a focused mid-range with some, some oomph, some, some bottom end. And uh, we needed sustain. The way I've been giving bass sustain recently, lately, is Saturn. And this guy right here, this dynamics knob, this one little whoop, that thing, man, changes Incredible. my life. I love this thing. And so I'll break up the bass and the bottom end, I never really push the drive. I like that to be clean and sustain, but then I'll get in here in the mid range and drive it. And so you can see I drove it a lot in you know, whatever this frequency range is from 586 to 1883. Uh, And you can see also I'm driving the dynamics there because I want that picking, that driving to sit on top of the mix. And so I'm using this to create that sustain and help it sit on top. Um, But definitely the bottom end, that's a, that's a game changer for me. So really quickly, Dave. Yeah, hit me. I just, I just, I just want to make a point here. Um, In the box for me and my philosophy, very important harmonic distortion mm. is going to make the difference. I'm looking at his bussing and I'm hardly seeing any processing going on here for this because the harmonic distortion is taking care of that. Let's look at the EQ for that DI. Yeah, for sure. I 
It's probably hardly anything. But yeah, it, just see, I knew it. There was hardly anything. Just a little it. kiss, man. Because that Which, distortion that Saturn's bringing to the table is just making make putting it together. Saturn, because I mean, listen to the before and after again. That's that's a very it's a different bass tone. Yeah, it's like you got a. It almost feels like a guitar compressor pedal. Those like uh, two, three hundred dollar. You know, was it Walrus Audio and um, Sans Amp? Uh, yeah, Sans Amp. What's the, uh, I love the company. Why can't I think of uh, JHS? Josh Scott, love yeah. his YouTube channel, and uh, so you can you can hear that compression, but I'm not using a compressor. I'm using the saturation and the um, it's all, it's all about transient the shaper, distortion. the dynamic Absolutely. snob built into Saturn. So that multiband transient, love it. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, what we did on that bass. Then we've got an amp tone, and I have a feeling this is the uh, over-the-top saturated goodness and then i did automate this down at the verse i think it was there was a couple sections yeah you can see there's the automation where first verse i wanted that to uh to chill out a bit put it back in at the chorus out quite a bit at the second verse and then you can see i you know what's a crescendo between friends for uh and then it vamps out and then it's just uh give me all you got kind of thing so here and i actually automate this delay delay on bass what's going on here i automate oh, awesome. a delay on the bass because i felt like it filled it out and i tell you what let's see i think it's that section right there with the crescendo yeah look so it turns on only for that little section right there let's listen in solo well, let's turn off the vocals so we can really hear it and then i'll play it in the track because you can feel it in the track as well otherwise why do it Yeah, awesome. man. Dimension. So let's play the bass. So now here's both the bass tracks. Oh, yeah. Automation, guys. Automation. All right. Now in context, because context matters. Gotta have the guitars. What else are we missing? So it's 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 in there. It's in there with those guitars that are swelling up. This adds a little bit of character. The, tran the transition of that part into the guitar part sounds really cool. Right on, man. Yeah, I, at least I think so. Yeah. Hey, I thought so, or else I would have deleted it and hi shamed myself. And <laughs> all right, so there's the bass, and um, that's I think that. We got Let's one see. more question, David. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, what happened? It disappeared. Can you read it? I think it's the last one in, in YouTube. You know, I think I saw one that asked about the reverb. The reverb in Dr. On Toomey. On Dr. Toomey. And, hey, if you liked what we did on Dr. Toomey, I, I can't promise, but Job, the producer, thinks that Dr. Toomey will be, um, and I, hey, he's a brother. I, I love him. And uh, he he seems to think that, We'll be able to use that. We'll have to make sure with the label and everything. But yeah. uh, I think we're going to be doing some mix breakdowns of Dr. Toomey. But uh, Valhalla is um, a reverb that I love to use. Uh, they're, they have several. I don't remember which one exactly right off the cuff here. But um, Valhalla and the UAD uh, EMT 250, 140, yeah. or both. I have both. Maybe all, maybe all three of them. <laughs> it might have been. A little bit of each, just depends, yeah. but yeah, we'll see. Maybe was, we can open that I one up. I think it was vintage. Wasn't it vintage room? Um, I think I'd used many, like three or four different reverbs yeah. at different that's, times, that's, and yeah, that's what ended up happening. Almost yeah. always modulating. I love modulated reverbs. I'm a guitarist, and so I've you know grew up playing in right. church, and the the Boss RV5, um, RV6 now is I think the one that they're on, but that Lots modulated reverb. That kind of trendy reverb tone. I came into mixing with an ear for modulated reverbs. But, yeah, man, yeah. so I think this we're... Was, uh, this was a great night. We're in a good place. Yeah, I thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I'm not sure if we got any comments over on Facebook, but we'll see uh, 
I think we're going to go ahead and run this back on Thursday. We will probably feature a new song, and we may even feature starting a mix together, pulling it up. We'll have maybe the gain staging, talk about what we do, and then move into a rough mix. Maybe we do a, a, hey, here's how we start a mix, and we'll push it up and maybe hear from you guys, let you contribute some thoughts and ideas to yeah. the mixing like process. Ideas, yeah. But unless you guys have anything else, hit us if you're, you're still with us, you got any more questions. I'll kind of look back here, but um, would love to build this and and for you guys to be a part of it. Uh, super pumped to be able to do it, especially hanging out with Joey. I know that we're going to talk mastering plenty, um, and don't let me don't let me build him up just as a mastering engineer. He's got an incredible ear. He's a <laughs> great mixer, and uh, we're going to be you, maybe even me turning over the mouse. You know the the times where I'm hitting my head against the wall, can't get it going. Uh, Joey's going to take control of the computer and he's going to mix while I go get some bacon. And uh, <laughs> I don't drink coffee anymore, so bacon we're cheeseburger. we'll just say we'll say bacon. But uh, yeah, well, thanks again to uh, I I don't know how to pronounce the the client's name accurately, so I don't want to disrespect them. But uh, we'll put all that information and where you can can get more from them and all of that. Uh, Joey, we will put his stuff in the description. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw a, a discount code for Path to Pro for probably the next week for launching the live stream. I'll have more on that in a proper email, not just, you know, an email last minute, but uh, we'll uh, we'll hook you guys up with a discount code for that. Definitely uh, check that out. And then we've got giveaways, man. We got tons of companies lined up to give away free stuff. So you guys keep checking it out. They keep coming, hanging out with us, submitting great questions. We'll make sure that uh, we uh, pay it forward and get some free gear any chance we can. So we're at some hardware too, man. I don't just yep. don't just think we got plugins and and courses coming your way. We're we're gonna get some hardware. So, yep. But uh, yeah, man. Hey, thanks again, Theriso. Uh, please let me know if I'm saying your name correctly. But uh, learning a lot. Thank you. There we go, man. So well, definitely. Thank you guys. We love you guys. I hope you learned something today. Uh, it was great hanging out. Really, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart. Right on. Well, hey, thanks again, guys. We'll go ahead and uh, we'll close it out for the night, and uh, we'll catch you guys on Thursday. Good night. Have a good one.